Hello everyone. In this video, I will be showing you how you can integrate a 10 GHz low noise amplifier fully designed in AWR's microwave office with DC biasing circuitry simulated in NI Multisim and how to create a final PCB prototype uh, of the complete system. Let's start with a quick summary of what we will be doing. The first step is to have the low noise amplifier designed in microwave office with a created layout for the RF section of it. Then this low noise amplifier will be exported using a DXF file into NI Ultiboard's database as a new component. Following that, low frequency biasing circuit will be simulated in multisim, where the low noise amplifier part will eventually be added to it to finally create the final PCB. Here in Microwave Office 10, I have the 10 GHz low noise amplifier sample design already open. You can see that for this design, the gain, the return loss, and the noise performance over the operation frequency range have all been validated. Also, the layout has been created and you can preview it in 3D. And also, looking at the 2D layout, the pads that I have highlighted here are where the DC biasing of the amplifier should be applied to operate the FET transistor properly. Uh, 5 volts are needed at the drain and minus 0.7 volts are needed uh, at the gate. So let me now go ahead and export this layout as a DXF file to import an ulti board. Here in ulti board I will start by opening uh, the component database and add a new component to my user database specifically. Uh, the component is a PCB part, and in the PCB shape of it, I will be importing the layout that I have already created in Microwave Office. As you can see, the DXF import menu in Ultiboard automatically detects all the layers of the DXF file for the copper, holes, vias, and so on. However, I only need to import the copper one in this design. Um, I will merge it into the Ultiboard copper top layer, and notice that I have to make sure it's imported in the correct dimension units, and that all the closed shapes will be defined as copper areas. Now, let's change the color of the top layer back to green, and selecting all of the imported shapes and going to its properties menus under the copper area tab, you uh, can change the copper fill shape to a solid one uh, to make sure it looks exactly the same as the one exported from microwave office. Uh, the next step would be to add pins to this shape to be able to connect it to other parts when placed in a multi-SIM design, for example. So these pins would be needed for the drain and gate bias points, uh, for all the vias to be able to connect uh, the vias to ground, and for the RF input and output ports. And note for, that for the vias, when placing them in Ultiboard, the same diameter as in microwave office should be preserved. And for the RF ports, the same trace width should be preserved to maintain matching. Now that we're done with this PCB part, let's add it to the Ultiboard database uh, to be able to reuse it in a multi-SIM design sheet along with other circuit components that will be used for the biasing circuit. Now in multi-SIM, you can see that I have already built a circuit that reads a regular 12-volt battery input and provides the desired bias levels for the LNA part. Um, as of multi-SIM 12, the database includes 24,000 components from voltage and current sources to basic RLCs to transistors and analog components including op amps as well as a very powerful library of power electronics components to even electromechanical components such as machines and motors. So uh, let me run a quick interactive simulation and place a couple of probes on the circuit to make sure I, get, uh, I got it right. So, by the way, this circuit is designed to compensate for temperature variation. So if you go to the SPICE simulation setting and change the ambient temperature, the bias level should remain the same. Now, let's go ahead and create a part of the LNA to include in the schematic. And since we already have defined the footprint of it in Ultiboard, it's as simple as following the eight steps of custom component creation in Multisim. Once this part has been created, it could be reused for an unlimited number of designs in multi-SIM. 
Uh, notice that I also added a couple of uh, through-hole SMA RF connectors that I have a multi-SIM and um, as well as two pin uh, PCB header to connect the 12 volt input. The last step I have left in this design flow is to create the final PCB layout that includes the RF LNA and the peripheral uh, biasing network. Simply by transferring the same design I use for simulation to UltiBoard, I can have it back in the PCB environment. When transferring a design from multi-SIM to UltiBoard, notice that you get a summary of all the changes that will be made to either approve or ignore. Uh, for this board layout, I will start by having the correct selection filters enabled. Then I will adjust the board outline since I don't need such a big board. Um, the next step is to manually place the RF components of this design, being the LNA and the connectors, uh, since they cannot be placed randomly on the board. Um, notice that the ulti board is giving me a design rule check or DRC error. Uh, looking into the DRC tab, I learned that it is a clearance error, and clicking on it, uh, it points me out to the LNA part. Uh, this is because the LNA has very small and delicate dimensions, and to get rid of the errors, uh, I must reflect this in the copper area design rules. Uh, I can do this by changing the minimum allowed clearance in the spreadsheet view uh, of UltiBoard of all the copper area uh, of all the copper areas in the design. Uh, notice that now all the DRC errors are gone. Moving on with this PCB layout, you can benefit from UltiBoard's manual or automatic placement and routing for rapid prototyping of the rest of the design. You can see here that I have added another DXF of the company logo and some description text on the silk screen, and I have a complete design including the low frequency circuitry and the RF parts as well. By now, you are ready to go to create many similar circuit design applications with multi-SIM and the AWR design environment. Please don't forget to let us know if you have any feedback.